And Natasha, I'd like for you to also discuss the issue of protecting voting rights, uh, but also um, what kind of critical steps do we need to take by November? Good afternoon. Um, yes, I'm Natasha Merle. I'm here on behalf of the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Um, I'm here uh, instead of Sherilyn Eiffel, and I saw in the chat a number of people were disappointed that um, Sherilyn can be here today, but we've all seen um, kind of what's gone on in the news most recently um, with the protest of uh, police brutality. Uh, and so just a couple of hours ago, um, Sherilyn had to turn her attention elsewhere. And so I have um, uh, yeah, invited me to come instead, and so I'm happy to be here. Thank you all for having me. Um, Getting more directly to Gabby's points and questions, uh, you know, the current events have revealed uh, to some people, at least those who didn't already know, though I understand that most of us probably already recognize this, that our democracy is not working for large segments of this country. Uh, this includes barriers and laws that prevent citizens from participating in the political process that um, Tom really laid out uh, just a moment ago. So contrary to what Many people believe, though, um, what our nation is experiencing, this voter suppression, it is not an aberration. Uh, this is the same playbook that has been used in this country over and over. So even at this time, um, or perhaps especially at this time during this pandemic, when the racial inequities and the structural racism has become made even more clear, LDF con con continues to fight uh, for the attainment of full citizenship of Black people. So in that vein, um, we at LDF and myself included have brought challenges uh, in South Carolina, Alabama, and Louisiana. Um, we've uh, filed a brief in Texas as well, all challenging uh, in the current, during the current pandemic, uh, challenging to expand voters' ability to vote safely uh, during this pandemic. So as Gabby mentioned, as we saw in Wisconsin, just a few weeks ago when voters were forced to congregate in person and to wait in extremely long lines in order to vote, um, you know, we, we saw that happen and we saw that play out on the TV. But, you know, even if some voters are able to overcome the burden to their right to vote or if they're first, you know, willing to take that risk to vote in person, uh, during this time of COVID-19 that doesn't allow the states or does not justify states burdening uh, the right to vote. And so, you know, we saw what happened in Wisconsin, um, you know, where after that happened, you know, dozens of people were tested positive for COVID-19. So um, at the Legal Defense Fund in Louisiana, for example, and, so, and in Texas, as uh, you know, Tom noted, in Louisiana, there's currently no, uh, no excuse absentee voting. So people who face higher risk or consequences from COVID-19, which we now know also falls disproportionately on Black people, um, they, are, they don't allow voters to vote by mail um, without having a specific reason. And so people will either have to risk their lives or choose not to exercise their right to vote, um, which uh, LDF is currently challenging. And even in states that do allow uh, no excuse absentee voting or states that have recently expanded their definitions to allow people who um, are concerned about, concerned about COVID-19 that have allowed larger groups of people to vote absentee, we're still bringing challenges in those states because you know, the states may allow you to vote by mail, but there's other hurdles that voters have to overcome in order to vote by mail still. So for example, in Alabama, where we brought this challenge, you may be uh, able to vote by mail um, because of the COVID-19, but you have to one, include a, a copy of your photo ID, uh, and two, you have to have two witnesses sign your ballot, um, witness, you signing, witness you signing your ballot and also them themselves uh, provide their signatures, um, or you have to get a notary. And so it doesn't make sense. If you're truly concerned uh, about COVID-19 in this pandemic, and you're concerned about people having, being able to safely vote and not wanting to force them to congregate uh, and perhaps um, either endanger themselves or those around them, why would you force people who don't have printers and scanners at home to go to some place to make a copy of their photo ID? Or why would you force them to find two people 
to witness their signature in person. Um, that doesn't, uh, you know, comport with attempting uh, with, you know, to social distance and to keep voters safe. And it especially doesn't make sense uh, in face of the fact um, that there's no legitimate interest uh, for the state to uh, continue to enforce these type of requirements. A number of states, obviously, including Alabama, they say that they require a photo ID and they require um, getting two witnesses in order to prevent voter fraud. Um, however, as you know, and as Tom had already lined out, laid out, there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Um, and also, it's important that these states have other mechanisms already in place for preventing vote, voter fraud, and that includes the criminal penalties they already have in place. So in Alabama, for example, um, there's already a subset of individuals who are allowed to vote by mail without providing a copy of their photo ID with their ballot. And so there is no reasonable reason why the state's current laws that prevent voter fraud in those circumstances would not similarly prevent voter fraud now when people want to be able to vote by mail uh, so that they can avoid risking uh, contracting uh, COVID-19 or, or passing it on to their communities. And so, you know, voter fraud, which states and others use widely um, as a way to uh, further, as a way to um, can continue voter suppression and continue to burden voters' right to access to uh, the ballot. Voter, just you know, waving the flag of voter fraud does not justify and cannot allow be allowed to justify uh, burdening people's rights uh, to access uh, to the ballot. So you know, voters should not have to choose between serious risks to their health and their right to vote. And so that's why LDF, along with our pre-COVID nineteen cases, have continued to file these other cases. Uh, throughout the South uh, to ensure that during this current pandemic, um, not just the November election, you know, obviously we're looking ahead to the November election, but we also care highly, very much about local elections. So there's local elections in South Carolina and Alabama in June, July, and August. And so we want to make sure voters who are voting in local elections are also protected and allowed to cast the ballot without risking their health. Um, and so, you know, even we're continuing to bring these challenges uh, to ensure that voters don't have to make this, um, you know, unnecessary and unconstitutional choice between the right to the ballot or risking the health of themselves and their communities. So thank you, Gabby, uh, for inviting me um, and allowing me to join y'all at this, you know, last last.